Deadly Tarantula Girl coming to you from my private Serpentarium tonight to bring you a long-awaited Brachypelma collection video. This specific video is just going to highlight the Brachypelma that I currently have in my collection. So to start off with, I wanted to tell you a few generalities about the species Brachypelma. And as you guys know, I do not have a PhD in arachnology. I am just a simple hobbyist, just like you, trying to deliver basic information. These generalities are not going to be true for every single Brachypelma, but like I said, they are basic generalities. And number one, Brachypelma are from Southern North America, but primarily Central America. They are all terrestrial. Some of them are opportunistic burrowers. They typically like to live in mid 70s to mid 80 degrees Fahrenheit with a 50 to 75% humidity. They do all possess urticating hairs. They are all silk spinners. They all, as all animals do, have a positive ecological impact on the earth. For one, they have a negative impact on pest bugs. Uh, basically smaller insects, which we would consider pests. They have a positive impact on larger predators, animals that are eating them. They have a place in the food chain. They are good for soil aeration or uh, loosening up the soil and oxygenating it. Things that plants need to grow when they burrow and that they beautify our world. First animal we're gonna take a look at is Brachypelma smithi. Let's start with a Brachypelma smithi and a Brachypelma homori. And as you can see, there is a 0 0.001 millimeter difference between, who am I kidding? I'm just joshing you. These are both smithi. Now to tell you a little bit about Brachypelma smithi, its common name is the Mexican red knee. This became super popular in the 80s in China and they started getting exported like crazy, although that's kind of settled down at this point in time. They are generally from the Pacific Coast in Mexico. These animals are docile and beautiful with their dramatic coloration, although they do tend to be notorious hair kickers. Smith eye are most comfortable in temperatures from mid 70s to low 80 Fahrenheit and generally are happiest in uh, mid 50s to low 60% humidity. The males can live for about 10 years with the females having a super long lifespan of 25 to 30. This is a medium size around five, five and a half inches and a slow growing species. And the Brachypelma smithi was the species that covered Indiana Jones, which first got me interested in tarantulas. Next, let's take a look at Brachypelma albopelosum. The common name of the Brachypelma albopelosum is the Honduran curly hair, and you can see why they get their name, and that's because of their curly, woolly hair. This is a species that originates from Central America and they live in the savannas. And although it is less colorful, I think it is really adorable because of its unique hair and the fact that they do kick fewer hairs, although it looks like this lady has kicked a few hairs in her day. They are most comfortable at 70 to 85 degrees Fahrenheit with a 65 to 70% humidity. This animal maxes out at a medium size and is a medium paste grower at about five inches with the males living about four years and the females living usually eight to 10 years. Let's take a look at a Brachypelma vegans. Also known as the Mexican red rump due to the red coloration on their bodies. These animals were considered to have medicinal purpose by the Mayan culture and some of their venom is actually being tested to cure certain diseases today. This is a Central American species that live in the savanna and scrublands. They prefer temperatures from about 70 to 85 degrees Fahrenheit with a 65 to 80% humidity 
As far as the Brachypelma genus goes, they are feisty, a medium rate grower, topping out at about six inches. Brachypelma erratum. Brachypelma erratum is also known as the Mexican flame knee. They are happiest in low 70s to mid 80s degree Fahrenheit, 50 to 60 percent humidity. They are from Mexico. They were described, as many of these species were, in 1992 and live in habitats of dry forest. This species is less active and is considered to resemble the smith eye, except that it is darker in coloration. This is a fairly slow grower, topping out at a medium size of five to six inches. Now let's take a look at a Brachypelma emilia. Brachypelma emilia is known as the Mexican red leg or the Mexican true red leg, as that is a similar name describing many of the species. Their color varies a lot from a light rose pink to a dark red. They are from the Mexico Panama region. They are happiest from 50 to 85 degrees Fahrenheit, 65 to 80% humidity. They grow at a medium rate, topping out at about six inches, and they have the black triangle on the carapace, which makes them unique in comparison to all the other animals in their genus. Last but not least, the beautiful Brachypelma boamai. Taking a look at Brachypelma boamai, this animal is also called the Mexican fire leg or sometimes the Mexican rust leg. This animal is skittish and very prone to hair kicking. They are crazy hair kickers, which drive me nuts about them. This is a species from the Mexican savanna and scrubland. They like to be at 70 to 85 degrees Fahrenheit, 70 to 80% humidity. They grow at a medium rate top out at about six and a half inches and live for 10 plus years. Hope you guys enjoyed that little walk through my six favorite Brachypelma critters that are currently in my collection. I do have more Brachypelma than that. However, those were the only ones that I could show you right now that were currently in my room, available big and in full coloration. So I hope you guys like this one and comment, let me know what you'd like to see next and I'll be seeing you guys next time.